suggests probably in the genus Norella, N-A-R-E-L-L-A. -L -L uh, but there are also other chances. It has uh, downward polarized polyps, so downward facing polyps, uh, which would indicate also and support genus Norella. Looks like the other side of this rock might have a few things as well. Yep, yep. I think they're all probably primnoids here. Uh, whether they're branching fans like this or, or more sparse branching, there's a couple of possibilities, but at this depth, um, that type of morphology screams Norella. I like this rock. Yeah. I'm not sure oh. a few things there. Is that a sea star? That's a big sea star. Oh, yeah. nice. If we could just scan opportunistically, you know, kind of along the edge of this rock as we move up, that okay. would be ideal. Of course. There's a solitary hydroid at the bottom left, uh, a gelatinous pink structure. Uh, yeah. Oh, we haven't seen one of those this cruise, or this watch, watch, dive, <laughs> two dives. Both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that uh, botryoidal texture on the ferromanganese crust, on the lower part of the screen? Yeah, I am a little curious if we can get a tighter zoom on that white on top, that white branchy bit. Yes. Looks different than the other things we've seen. Coming in. Ready, RV? Let me know. Yeah. Yeah, you're clear to zoom whenever you're happy. Cool. So there's a question. Do we ever see coral bleaching at these depths? Um, so what is that? Yeah, let's just table that question for a second. Hmm. Sorry. Oh no, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So it it's a. I would call that either a paragorgia or a subagorgia, but they all belong to the same family now. But I was wondering if uh, we could take a, a little bit of a closer look at that. Yes, that's something I don't think we've seen on either of the past two dives. Is a paragorgia, is that a type of coral? Yeah, clear to see whenever you're happy. Yeah, it's a type of, uh, I guess they all belong to the family of precious corals now, the wow. Coraliidae, but um, I think we still refer to the precious corals as uh, the coraliids, you know, affectionately, but some of the taxonomy has just been recently revised. So, Steve, going back to that question about bleaching. Um, All right. So these are deep sea coral, right? Um, do they bleach like the shallow coral would or? How would that um, I'll hold off on that question for a second. We're, we're going to take a, we'd like to take a Niskin bottle here first, okay. at least. Um, kind of right over this rock, not too far off bottom, if we can. Okay. Yeah, of course. Down. So we're taking a Niskin bottle here because there is a little bit more species diversity than we have seen on the dive so far. Um, We've seen at least um, in the general vicinity a bamboo coral, um, as well as at least, I would say, a couple of potentially different species of primnoids. This species of Paragorgia or Sibagorgia, unclear at the moment. Um, just a heads up, I may want to sample a very small piece of that white coral after our Niskin here, or, or before, whichever. I think this is fine, yeah. So really nice outcrop. 
yeah, I mean, it, it's the best we've seen. Uh, yes. But we have six Niskin bottles on board, so we can take up five more um, samples. Yeah. So it's just one button for both of them, yeah? Cool. Yes. There are no Niskins yet taken, so dealer's choice. And for awareness, the ship is coming to a stop, so... Argus will, or Atalanta will start moving soon, but we've got, we've got time and space. Um... So we got in the water at 12 o'clock midnight for a 20 hour dive that should put us on deck at eight, uh, six, yep. Yep, looks good. So oh, eight, 8 p.m. on deck. Uh, so I think we're making good time. Yeah, I think we can afford to spend a minute here, do a couple samples and then we'll keep going. Yeah, we don't need much, so I know it's very small, but it would be great to have a small piece of that. Um, and it can go in the forward box, it can go in the slurp, it can go any place. Just a little, little piece for tissue uh, sequencing would be ideal. What was the sample number on that Niskin? Oh, oh the... Yeah. Zero two four. I thought our last sample was zero two four. Is I wrong? What was the... Sample number for the rock with coral. Uh, right. Uh, Niskin was two six. Are you happy if I'm just like hovering here or? Two yeah. Two. Do you want me to set two down four like on the rock there? Was the coral with rock? So. Okay. Yeah. So the Niskin zero two five. I'm just gonna pay a little bit of tether. Twenty five. Cool. Yeah, I think it's twenty five, and then this would be twenty six, right? We can just put in new entries if it's if it's mislabeled. We'll fix it in post. Okay. 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 Just gonna come around this way and then. Yep, so you're, it's just on the tip of your toes right now. Oop. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. It's always the hardest one, right? <laughs> Is it the crunchy one? No, it's the, it's the white flexy <laughs> one. Okay. So there'll be resistance to it? No, it no? should be spongy. Spongy, okay. Yeah, so there should be no resist, well, yeah, no resistance. Okay. Nobody okay. can resist. The craft arm. <laughs> so I only have my auto heading on and. <laughs> yeah, I don't need the forward. I just got my dance on. Oh, fuck.
Let me know if I'm too close. I feel like I'm kind of encroaching. Thanks again. thought this was Paragorgia or Primna Primnoda. Oh my god. What was that? Um, what did we think this coral was? The white one? Uh, so this one is possibly Sibogorgia. I put it in the chat. Okay. Um, Sibogorgia compared to That's Paragorgia it. is very poorly sampled okay. in the Central Pacific. So that makes this collection, even a piece of it, extremely valuable. Um, and so we'll try. You did say this was considered a precious coral, right? Um, yeah, so what happened, so <laughs> that's, that's a long story. Um, this group of corals used to belong to a family called the Paragorgia Day. And they were recently revised into a larger family called the Coraliidae, um, which were technically the original precious corals. So I don't think, yep. in common parlance, this makes it a precious coral, but it belongs to the same group as precious corals. Okay. I'll let them focus on yep. this uh, collection for the bit and stop talking for yep. a second. Uh -huh. those polyps beautiful that's that's perfect that's fine that's fine that's more than enough and we can stow it in the forward box um, just to be sure we have it and for data we can we double up other corals on this it's pretty fairly distinctive and small sure so lambda. either or Oh, yeah, okay. Got it. And that, that sea star I mentioned uh, before, that's an, as uh, an asteroid sea star, a type of persingid uh, persingid sea star, that's the family. And there are several different genera and species in that group. Planktivorous, though. Suspension feeders eats, yeah, they eat things that float by. Um, unlike sea other sea stars, which are more like will swallow whole bits of coral and sponge, and other animals. So when it's feeding, are its arms like in the water collecting plankton? Yeah, usually, yeah. Sometimes you see them splayed out over the rock like that, but um, not quite clear what they're doing. But usually their arm tips are in the air. Yeah. Well, or air, water, I guess. There is something called a basket coral, right? They, or basket. Not, not a basket coral, basket um, star. Right? right. They kind of do the same thing. Okay. Different group of echinoderms, yeah, but also very closely related. All right, that's a bit of a separation. Should I just uh, hold station here and then 
auto everything. Cool. Alright, so. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Either, either, I, either, either or, yeah. So this is the sample tray or a tool tray? Okay, coming out. Oh, that is, we're going to the front one. Sorry, sorry. No worries. <laughs> I was like, I see that one moving. <laughs> that was tool tray coming out. It, it's generally pretty sinky, yeah. Yeah. More sinky than floaty, I guess. And the spectrum of sinky floaty. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. It sure does. <laughs> I understood perfectly. There we go. Very sinky. Not sinky. And not shiny. Yeah, on the <laughs> on the <laughs> on the on the sinky floaty spectrum, it's a yeah, it's definitely a, a sinky. I really appreciate that in the world. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah. I think um, <laughs> this needs a paper called like the Sinky Floaty Index. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, what's that, Gabby? I think you take the really index into account. Is that a follow up collection? to? Yeah, is that a follow up to the Crunchy Squishy <laughs> Index? <laughs> yes, this is a. Ooh. This, this is important literature. Is this a um, Bosoma? I think it looks like a. Bolasomene subfamily, Bolasomene. It's pretty cool. Yep. Is this a sponge? Yep, it's a glass sponge. Nice. In the subfamily, Bolasomene. Are we Maybe not Maybe Bolasoma. Uh, Im images would be great. Um, okay. Oh, there's uh, on the other side. Wow, you can really see it in the in the uh, cam. Um, the tentacles, oh yeah, my. coming off uh, from probably a Tina four. It's on the other side. Wow, that that's a perspective you wouldn't see because I couldn't see that in Zeus at all. There's two tentacles coming off from a Tina four on the maybe on the oh no, it's on the near side. I can show. It's that pink oh. pink line right there. Yeah, you can see it right here in oh. the Tricops cam. I don't think we can here. get a zoom on it with. Zeus, maybe. I, I've got it yeah. lined wow. up perfectly oh, in cool. Triclops. Oop. There. Okay, mm. got it. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's a that's a Tina four. Um, normally, you're familiar with Tina four as they float up in the water column. Uh, they uh, eat uh, plankton and, and things like that. But there's also a number of benthic Tina fours that have tentacles they stream out like fishing lures um, and the genus for these I think was Tealfiella um, but they have been collected but precious few times um, but since there's only one here we'll, we'll leave it be with the sponge bolosoma okay so moving on yeah Roger that possible oh. we are you know, also interested in sponges but we'll um, 
we'll keep an eye out in more opportune locations. Okay. Science, anything else here you want to take a look at? Not here. No. We're in good shape. You want to the vessel? You can move along. Make so? Yeah. yeah. If you're happy. If you're ready for I'm that. I'm happy. Cool. Always happy. Uh, science, do we want to do like a direct hypotenuse here, or do we want to do these two legs? Um, yeah, can we go a little bit easter, east, yeah. eastward, to, at least for a move, maybe? Okay, let's do uh, a 080 then. Bridge now. Uh, uh, five zero meters, zero eight zero, please. So you can see this little uh, broken pillow basalt over here. Um, when these pillow basalts full first form, um, they they kind of fill up, and as they cool, uh, they'll break apart, and you'll have new pillow basalts growing out of those little uh, fractured areas. So you'll see that often with pillow basalts. So it's like a pillow and a pillowcase. Yeah, yeah. The pillows grow from pillows, in case you were wondering. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever wake up and you have an extra pillow. <laughs> Lava. Lava. <laughs> pillow basalt. <laughs> pillow basalt. Same thing. What's that yellow thing, top right? Oh. That looks different. What do you think? Squishy or crunchy? Squishy. I'm going crunchy. I'm thinking some sort of mineral. I'm not sure. Also crunchy, though? Wow. There's also a... Is that more coral? Yeah, we... we oh, there's a... Oh, yeah. There's a black coral. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're looking at here. You're talking about this right here, right? Yeah. It's a great image on the uh, still cam. Iron oxidation, maybe? Possibly. Oh, definitely crunchy. It's almost translucent. Oh, yeah. You can it's actually rock. zoom, but it's very slow cinematic zoom with the triclops. <laughs> it's a little it's a little greenish. Oh, so there's Xenophyophore in front of it? Exactly. I was just going to say that. Jinx. It might just be uh, weathering on the side of that rock. Uh, mm. Now that we look a little closer on the... Okay. Yeah, and that black core off to the right-hand side, that's almost, well, tough okay. to tell, but it could be either... Uh, could be alternatopathies. Do you want to zoom on it? Um, if we have time. So I'll, I'll yeah. try to uh, circle it here. We just put in a ship move, so we've, oh, yeah. we've got right here. About yeah. eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Eight minutes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, whenever you're happy to zoom, please. I think that looks like alternatopathies to me, but we'll take some images here. It should be fairly easy to, to identify because we've got it on a very good uh, plane. It could be bathypathies too, tough to tell. All right, very nice. Good images? Yes. Okay. Another neat little feature in this area, you can see these little cracks over here. Uh, so those are uh, secondary mineralization of uh, phosphorite uh, that is precipitating within the cracks of these basalts. As the uh, name might suggest, you have a lot of phosphorus in there. And uh, those are uh, not ideal for age determinations. Not datable. Not datable, not datable <laughs> rocks. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Totally forgot about that. <laughs> So somebody asked.
asked a, a while ago, is it true the Western United States was once underwater? How can you tell if so? Um, yeah, aren't there like seashells and fossils and things that are found on top of mountains? Yeah, um, well not just seashells, but just uh, the stratigraphy of the Western United States is indicative of a uh, marine environment and as you progress uh, east from the coast, you can see a um, you can see evidence for shoreline um, uh, transgression, uh, which basically means that you are uh, going from a deep water environment to more of a shallow uh, marine environment, and you can see those stratigraphic layers uh, as you're going through time. Very nice um, shot. This is a sacrocalyx sponge. I'm going to try and. I'm going to try and do some uh, imaging with the still camera here. It's perfect as it is. Okay. If you just hold a second. Cool. Took one. Take two. Okay, I got two. There is a little bit of dust, dustiness to the... Um, lens of the still cam i think it may be sediment or something maybe it'll get lost but unfortunately it's probably just the the reality situated where it is it's going to get a little dusty over time oh yeah i think i got the dust on it sorry about that no you can't do anything about it it's good running <laughs> yeah it, it, it's bound to happen it's expected a beautiful shot. We need those windshield wipers, uh, <laughs> don't don't wipers for the seafloor robotics people. Oh, well, we, we forgot to bring the uh, subsea uh, T boss Swiffer. Oh, yeah. Well, so <laughs> uh, subsea Swiffer. Subsea Swiffer. Swiffer. Yeah. Name. So the T boss is an instrument that we usually sail with for the Ocean Networks Canada cruises, or we're maintaining instruments along there. Seafloor Observatory, and the TBOS stands for the Toilet Such Brush of Science, <laughs> no. which is an oh. excellent no. cleaning tool. <laughs> we don't have a lot of big, big rock space left. Um, yeah. yeah, that might be too big. Yeah, I think so. I mean, usually we can fit like one, one or two, you know, twenty centimeter sized rocks in the okay. biggest starboard compartment. Yeah. We were doing twenty centimeters. That yeah, that one's probably in the 30 range. Oh, wow. Well. It, it may fit, but it would be a very tight That's squeeze. So, and so beautiful. Yeah. Could I get a slight zoom, Harvey? That'd be okay. Actually, we're pretty close. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, are we moving on, or do you want me to stay here? Uh, we're all set. We're all set, okay. Yeah. Stop loitering. <laughs> beautiful shot. Yeah. Nice How hunting. dare you loiter around such yeah. a <laughs> nice sponge. <laughs> yeah, glass sponges. So th this, um, this tells you that maybe we're entering part of the slope where things are a little bit more cohesive, stuck in more place. Stable. Yeah, st stability. So Adelina should be moving now. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna get the Thanks. ship back. Oh, way back's not that far. Thank you. So right now the depth that Hercules is at is about 2,500 meters. Uh, so is right it around possible 9, to iris yeah, depth? I'm so sorry. That's all right. Thank you. Switching PC camps. Where's that camps? Somebody was asking if we're able to see bioluminescence at the at these depths, and I would guess that the answer would be yes if we didn't have our um, the lights from the ROVs on. So we need to be able to see what Hercules is seeing. So there are quite a few lights that are being utilized. Oh, that's uh, heteropathies right there. That's another genus of black coral. Oh. It's okay. We 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 don't have to stop. Keep okay. going. Sorry. It's a it's an imaged well-imaged uh, heteropathies. What about that one? Yeah. Is it also well-imaged? Where are we looking? Uh, just um, 
Oh, the crinoid? The, yeah, the big yeah, one. The star thing. Yeah. Star thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's under the rock? Oh, shrimp. Never mind. Crinoids are difficult to sample. They tend to eject their arms um, when they're slurped, and they don't often hold well, hold together well uh, with changes in temperature. So we we collect them typically associated with other animals, but rarely on their own. Interesting. What is that? Yeah. Sponge? Uh, Where are we looking? Crunch oh. finish, right? And lasers. I'm I'm transfixed by the, the triclops cam because it's I know. such a nice image, but it's like it's looking at totally different things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a dead sponge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. I like the triclops because you can see a lot of the low things, so um, like xenophyophores, um, that don't stand out against the muddy bottom, the sandy parts of the bottom, as much as uh, some of the rocks do. Yep, sorry about that. No, I was, yeah. Someone in the chat was curious to know, are there any, is there evidence of microplastic showing up at these depths, way in the deep sea? Has anybody ever come it, across anything like that? It's definitely something that's currently being researched. I know um, colleagues in my uh, lab group back home uh, at Boston University are working on microplastics and deep sea corals. It's also been, or has been, or is being worked on in uh, sediments. So yes, there is, there are microplastics pres present, um, but unclear as to you know, what their source is and how they get there, what their composition is. That's all kind of in process. Yeah. Can I see the dive plan? Do you have a copy over there? Yeah. Thanks. I forgot what I wrote. <laughs> Freestyling. All right, so we're almost at waypoint two. That means we've covered about 800 and uh, about 900 meters in about six hours total dive time so far. So it's pretty good. This track uh, is about 2,400 meters long. So. What's on our sample list? Uh, so, sample list for today, rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Got Check. <it. laughs> um, angular rocks. Got it. Check. <laughs> Datable rocks. Got it. Maybe check. <laughs> Stand by a couple months. <laughs> um, but we're also in opportunistically sampling kind of the more poorly understood, uh, poorly identified species of biology in this area. So some of the corals and sponges in particular, these are extremely difficult to identify at depth. Um, we're taking water samples for eDNA, uh, and we're also using portions of the water we collect for uh, carbonate chemistry analysis. Um, not that we see any sclerotinians here. I haven't seen a single one, but um, we're trying to get a handle on the carbonate chemistry at depth. That tells us something about some of the environmental conditions that stony corals and other calcifying organisms may face. Um, sediment cores, so we, they, we attempted some sediment cores with mixed results earlier, um, mostly for in-fauna analysis, but we'll see what we get uh, when they come back up. I don't think, uh, there, maybe one of them might have turned out with something, but we'll see. 
very very general sampling goals for uh, this exploration dive. I think we'll put in another ship move, unless there's anything here that we're keen on stopping for. Sounds good. Great, keep going. Bridge now. Let's do another five zero meters, zero eight zero. Oh wow, some really big pillow basalts over here. Is that arcane formation again? Or radial formation? Radial formation. Radial formation. Okay. You could kind of see another broken pillow down there in the bottom of the screen. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, I've seen, I've never seen so many cracked open these broken uh, basalts before this, yeah, you know, pillow of lava. Something up. Something coming up to the left, top left. To the left. Oh yeah, I can see what's coming up slope with the triclops cam. I know. This really is becoming my favorite camera. <laughs> it's quite nice. It's got a nice big screen too, compared to the previous camera. We, we all, well, not previous. We're still using it, but um, a little bit more crisper. Okay, thanks. Resolution. Is that a sponge? Yeah. Right can we take middle? a snap on on that? Yes. I believe this is uh, a ferronomatid sea sponge, glass sponge. So. P H E R. Oh, actually, hold on. I might change that. Feel free to zoom when you're happy. Yeah, can you a little bit more? Yeah, I I think this is polyopagon. Uh, any more zoom? Maybe not. Well, we have some images of it, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to look that one up. It's not so clear. Um, could be a euplectelet, too. It's crazy. grab a few photos of that. Yeah. Do you want to go tight again? Are we good with photos? Uh, I think that's okay. Okay. Sounds good. So. Shall yep. I move on? Yep. So these sponges that we're seeing, are they actually like okay. spongy? Like how, you know, most people think of sponges like for cleaning and like they can wring them out and things like that. Are, are these similar in any way? Um, glass sponges come in a uh, lot of different textures. Uh, you have glass sponges that are more fiberglassy, so like, you know, squishy uh, glass fibers. Um, you have glass sponges that are more uh, rigid. Uh, these, uh, like, Ferrea especially, are very 
very fragile, crunchy type of uh, arrangement of glass spicules. Um, so it, yeah, you have, and then there are some that are just like uh, really, really sharp and will puncture gloves in some cases, some of the spicules. So it's tough. It's sometimes tough to tell what the texture is going to be on the seafloor. That one strikes me as one that's more uh, squishy and fiberglass-like. We have room for one of these smaller rocks in there? Yeah. Which one would you like? I don't know. We have quite a few to choose from. Um, probably something around 10 centimeters, uh, something smaller. What are you here? Uh, your call. I'm just trying to point out the ones that I think are loose. Like, uh, is that too large? I don't want to get anything too fine. big. Okay. Ooh. Oh, oh, that crack. That one looks kind of blocky, although might be a little large. This one you're talking about? Yeah, I think I think that's doable. It's about it's about ten or twelve. Okay. Wide, square. I'm thinking for uh, one of the smaller compartments. Good. Uh -huh. And we've got 15 meters left on the move, so it's good timing to uh, have oh. Adelina catch up. Sorry, I'm a little. I got a little close to the. Yes, correct. Let's see. If I zoom with... No, it's not gonna... It's blocked. It's blocked by this, yep. this pile of rocks there. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it is. That's attached. Okay. Try again. The best ones always are. Shoot here. Um, let's see. Oh, the one right here. Right next to it. Attached. Some of these, maybe. Yeah, any, a, anything around here. Um, oh. oh. Good ones never are. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps coming. Got it. We've got it's a few weeks. We've we got you a few shoot weeks your to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, sorry, one second. Come back. Turn on the Trying to get down. There you
slow, slow turn. I think so, yeah. Can we get a little turn on it, please? I want to see that other side, see if it's just a little sediment buildup or if it was just a bunch of phosphorus. Uh, kind of hard to tell. You, can you give it a squeeze? Or? Uh, no. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Squozing. Squozing. <laughs> I got the real cap word of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's uh let's let's grab it. Grip force nine. That sounds extreme. So the <laughs> Would you say that's about ten centimeters? Yeah. Yeah, less. Ten ten and less, yeah. Starboard B or D biobox. So stop. Starboard B or D. Oh shit. Oh. You want to just get ahead of Atalantis? Um, yes. It, it really. Yeah, I'm trying to put it in another sentence and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> It was perfect, yeah. Today. I've heard a lot of things on SPL, but that one's that one's a new one. <laughs> uh, so what was going on with that rock that cracked open and was uh, was it oxidized? Was um, yellow inside. Definitely uh, ha highly altered. Yeah, a lot of chemical alteration. Um, when you when you when you have a lot of alteration, those uh, those harder minerals tend to form into clays, which, as you might know, are pretty soft and squishy, easy to break apart. I think that was our watch name last year. It was highly altered. <laughs> highly I thought altered. it was soft and squishy. Soft and squishy. No, yeah. no, Those are all great band names. <laughs> <laughs> I love highly Squoze altered. Squoze and rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very I, strong. Wow. That's a good. really good name. That's a, That's a very name. strong name. Grip Force 9. Grip Force 9. Uh, zero 025 sample? It's not zero squishy seven. rock. 027. Zero zero <laughs> You've uh, forgotten the biology samples? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't exist anymore. What is the 025? I don't know. One year I was a part of the team called Highly Altered Microbes. <laughs> Just kept uh, going. Yeah. Another year I was on the, uh, the watch called. Delta Dan and the Arachnophobe Band. Mm. <laughs> That's a good one. How's that oh, sponge there? Yeah. Cool. That's an, uh, it looks like another uh, Chrysogorgid. Looks like a uh, giant dandelion. Similar to the one we, yeah, to the, similar to the one we, I think, sampled um, I that had the squat lobster in it. Our viewers joining us online, uh, we are the four to eight watch right now. We're going to be wrapping up here in about an hour, but we are still currently uh, exploring an unnamed, <laughs> <laughs> unnamed mostly sea like <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, unnamed seamount. Um, this is our uh, second dive of the crew so far. We are currently uh, NA 153 exploring Johnston Atoll. Yeah, we were running away from some bad weather there for a few days, and so we're back, and we are diving, and we're pumped. It's great. Got to work on that watch name, though. Four to eight doesn't sound, yeah. mm -hmm. sound great. I know. It just... Our viewers usually have some ideas. Who does? Our viewers. Are yeah, not I feel viewers. weird naming ourselves. I want, yeah. I want us to be given a name. I'm not sure you want that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they can give us ideas, and we can yeah. choose them when we like. Yeah. How about that? That sounds good. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you all are if you all are uh, watching online, feel free to write messages in the chat, questions, comments, anything like that. We'll try our best to oh, get okay, to them. Okay. Thank you. Our depth currently is two thousand five hundred twenty-nine meters. So again, about in the nine thousand foot range. Okay. And we are estimating that this dive is going to be about 20 hours. So we're about, what time is it? 
Uh, we're about seven hours into this dive currently. So okay. Still a long way to go. I do believe that I'm you're saying, going yeah, to I'm be to go down chatting with like the same four to eight laggy. crew. Oh, this is a cool one. This evening as well. What the fuck is this? Whoa. Yeah, the, the, it's a dead sponge with wow. a bunch of ophiroids on it. Are these parasites? Um, no, I mean, it's a dead sponge. So they, these are probably planktivorous um, ophiroids, brittle stars. Okay. So they're probably using that, that substrate, that structure, to get up into the current. Oh, okay. And you're looking more at a uh, lobate lava flow as opposed to pillows uh, in these ridges. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> English, please. Define the terms. <laughs> so the lobate flow is going to be a morphology where the sheet flow kind of advances a little quicker than a pillow, uh, pillow basalt flow would. Uh, it's still going to kind of crack and break apart open a little bit and uh, effuse out from those cavities. Do you want me to, to set down or shall I just hold station? Okay, right, you swap the two. I got it, okay. I so. wonder if that's like calcite and zeolites and... Yeah, I, I saw some material flaking off of it. Yeah, I'm... So if you're wondering don't what have very seen high hopes. So far this uh, dive, at least during the four to eight portion, um, we've gotten a few rock samples. I think Nick is pretty happy. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, okay, we've also seen different out. types of coral as well as sponges. Um, there was a really big sea star. I forgot what it was called already. B or D? I'll ask Steve when B, he's not busy. B as in boy or D as in dog. All right, v, do you mind if I put in a move here while we're waiting? Roger. It's okay if it goes in the other, we'll just mark nice it catch. down. <laughs> <laughs> nice putt. <laughs> so, that's, that's great. That's, okay. that's just going to go on uh, on top and see. It just fell in C. That's okay. Ro rocks are easy to differentiate. Yeah. And that was, that was probably easy, the smallest rock that we've collected so far. Yep. Yep. Shouldn't have a problem with that. Do we still have that one hanging out on our porch? Wedged between the cameras? Grip Force 9. <laughs> grip Force 9. <laughs> grip Force 9. Is that the, the strongest Grip Force? Yeah. Doesn't go up to 10? 10 is too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's our watch name, Grip Force 10. Grip Force 10. <laughs> oh, I like it. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, careful what you wish for, though. Squozing rocks. <laughs> Squozing rocks. August, whatever. <laughs> August 12th. August whatever. <laughs> We're waking up, everyone. <laughs> I feel like my coffee up. is just barely hitting me. I'm like, all right. Same. Took a while. Okay. How high do you think brittle stars could climb? Okay. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, on structures, they'll 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 climb up to the branch tips on a coral or sponge, so it's you know as high as is needed, I guess. <laughs> How fast can they can they move? Actually, pretty fast. Um, we've w we've watched them. I remember on a oh, cruise I was on in 2017. Oh yeah, if we have a chance, do a quick scan of this. 
um, wow. structure. Good for a ship move, ROV. Some of the... Ah, missed it. Great. Some of the um, Ophioplanthaca Mark, species, Ophioroids. Karen, are we good for a move? Um, yes. Cool. Bridge nav. Uh, five zero meters, zero eight zero. Yes. Sorry, Steve. That's no, all right. So this is a sponge stock with ophioroids, crinoids, so two different kinds of echinoderms, as well as a couple different species of anemone. That's beautiful. It just shows how persistent these structures are even through the death of the host animal. Mm. Uh, interesting. A lot of life here, but it's very, very small. What is... Oh. Oh, so yeah, there's a hydroid. Too. Yeah, the hydroid grind yeah. on the stock. Is that what you're seeing, too? Yeah, the yeah. stocked hydroid. Interesting. I, I think... I think those hydroids might make their own stocks. Huh. Um, that was my question. Yeah. Wow, I, I've seen gorgeous. them. I've seen hydroids on stocks before, and I've thought they were worm tubes, but I'm pretty sure that they are also capable of making their own stocks. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. So, nice shot. I mean, th th we know there are hydroids that are capable of making their own colonies. Um, they don't need to encrust or attach to anything on substrate. So these are ophiocanthid uh, brittle stars, I'm pretty sure, with long, long spines on their arms. Uh, Flytrap anemone, that's the big one in the middle. Oh. And a bunch of smaller um, anemones on top. All right. If we can kind of float up slowly, I will take a photo with the still cam. Okay. Thanks, that really helps. Really nice sunrise shot in the wire cam right now. Oh, really? We'll go to that after uh, we get this <laughs> nice still cam. Perfect. Good. Yeah, happy? All right, got it. Cool. Nice. Great picture. Speaking of sunrise, uh, <coughs> somebody was wondering if uh, we take watches, or, or excuse me, if we rotate the watches, or if uh, some of us barely see the sun the whole time. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, we do rotate the watches. Uh, so again, this current watch. Uh, we've been here since 4 a.m. We will be leaving at 8 a.m. and then coming back at 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's that beautiful sunrise. Thank you so much, Logan. Absolutely. Uh, is yeah, that so on Channel 3? It's on Channel There's 3. Channel 3. Got to get it while we can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, little, little baby uh, bolosoma. Or small bolosoma with sponge. We, we uh, imaged a larger one a while back and our scientists ashore had said it was pretty well sampled for this area. Uh. So, small one. Again, I, I, I often hear the terms like baby juvenile tossed around, but um, it's really not possible to tell how, how old these things are. They could be quite old and quite mature. Um, but we don't have a good handle on their ages and how they grow, how fast they grow uh, in different nutrient conditions that might support their development. Okay, I'll wait. Any, uh, any chance on playing with the slurp pose anymore and see if it comes through? Or do you think they were stuck? Yeah, we can we can play with it again. Um, yeah, for sure. Since we're just going to be driving for a little bit, I think I don't, don't think there's going to be anything in sample in the media area for a minute. Okay. So while we're 
we're working on that slurp. Um, just to recap about the ROVs that we're using. So the main one that we're using is Hercules. That is what your, the images you're seeing on the first channel are coming from the ROV Hercules. And so we're just kind of scanning around this uh, unnamed sea mount. So uh, when I go to play with the slurp a bit, you're gonna lose a lot of power. Um, That's fine. Yeah. I'm so just, just in autos. So. Yeah, just so you have a heads up. Okay. Well, thank you. Because it's you're, it's disorienting. You're like it doesn't go anymore. <laughs> so accompanying Hercules, there's also Atalanta. So uh, do you want to switch us to Bucket Cam? Yes. So Atalanta is the smaller of the two uh, ROVs that we're using. And you can see the feed on channel two that is showing the above view of Hercules. So Atalanta is kind of keeping an eye on Hercules as Hercules is exploring the ocean floor. Where is the coral? <laughs> it doesn't want to go. <laughs> so Argus is um, still around. We're not using Argus for this cruise. Uh, Argus is currently on land. Um, there are plans to still use Argus, so don't worry about that. But for just for the sake of this cruise, we're using Hercules as well as Atalanta. And again, these are ROVs, remotely operated vehicles. They're is not a single person that is within these vehicles down at 9,000 feet. Um, so both ROVs are being controlled uh, by the ROV pilots that we have on board. So Gabby and Karen. Come on, Coral. Come on, <laughs> Coral. Come on down. His jaws are so gangly. <laughs> Bronwyn, when you're getting a shout out from Wailua Homesteads. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, and we're getting ideas for our uh, our watch nickname. Somebody said we should be called the Four Tune Eight Ones. Fortunate ones. Nice. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh no, that's the shadow. Well, it doesn't look like it's in the part that we can see. Yeah. So that's the thing I'm worried about right now. Because I think I'm seeing a cut in the s hose there. It doesn't mean we've lost the sample. It just means there? we're not going to have. Yeah. Oh, just means we're not going to have great suction. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I see that. But let me just give it a few more. It's okay. If it's in the hose somewhere, we'll get it out on deck. Um, yeah. The but deeper, that just the better. Means we don't get to do more suction samples. That's all right. We have lots of box space. Well, what if we like maybe sucked up a little bit of like fine sand and that might push it through without damaging it perhaps? Yeah. We've tried that in the past. It's possible, but we don't need to do it now. We have over 12 hours left on the dive. It's up to you. <sighs> Yeah, uh, we can give it a go. Uh, if you want to land us, yeah. It won't. It'll only take a second. It won't hurt a bit.
type. Well, there's some sediment coming through. Yeah. But that is full stick down. Yeah, I know. Is it that stinks. Just it's just With no. The it's this pump. Um, I can't believe it. Yeah, I got like 1,300 psi. That's nuts. A very dark rock in front of us. Yeah. Did we flip it? I or think looks like one of the yeah. ones we flipped. Yeah. Okay. So how many rocks do we have so far? Uh, five. Plus the porch bonus rock, or plus the possible porch cool. bonus rock. Yes. Possible porch. That one I didn't. I didn't log. The ship has stopped, but we'll let you catch up. Yeah. Or we can put another move. I think by the time they get moving, then Great. we'll have already caught up. So Let's do it. I'm happy. Uh, science, okay to keep moving? Raj. Raj, Raj. Raj, Raj. Mm -hmm. Raj no. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, let's do another five zero meters, zero eight zero. Oh, let's actually do zero seven zero. Uh, bridge enough. Let's do um, zero six zero, please. Zero six zero, please, pilots. Zero six zero, Roger. Yeah, we'll start heading up to this waypoint three. Awesome, thanks. Oh, you know, it's, uh, camera's looking a little blue on the triclops. I'm gonna mess around with some of the weight balance settings. question from Maggie at the Science Center. Hi, Maggie. Um, what are we going to be doing with the samples that we're trying to collect? So that might be a good time to kind of recap for the, our viewers that are just joining us who haven't kind of um, heard exactly what the plans are for these samples that we're collecting. So as you heard a few moments ago, um, we have Can collected zoom about on this five. Uh, stick? Yeah, the stick. We got a stick. So we have some rocks that we've collected so far, as well as some biological samples. And uh, in just a moment, we could hear a few more details about what's going to happen with, with those samples once they're brought up onto the ship. May I have a zoom, please? Thank you. Okay, so this this looks to be the same bamboo coral that we sampled earlier. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that. Ooh, nice shot too with this still cam on this bermoids. There's like a lot of really, really tiny corals that are stuck in and amongst the rocks, under the rocks. 
Especially that one right in front of us. It's a great shot. Still Cam has it. Triclops. Beauty. Okay. On on both cameras, good to go. Cool. Cool. So we go. Heading off. Oh god. So what are you going to be doing with those rocks? Yeah, so uh, we're going to take the rocks. Um, initially, we're going to slice them in half here on board uh, Nautilus. And we're going to make initial assumptions um, to see if, they're, if we can make age determinations based off of their uh, mineralogy and uh, levels of alteration. Uh, when we think that we might have some samples that are usable, then we're going to send them to a lab, make some thin sections, and send them to a lab to make a petrographic thin sections. Uh, maybe look at some modal abundances of datable These phases. These are all from nodes here. Um, uh, after that step, uh, we'll take the rocks and crush them, grind them, sieve them, wash them, um, separate them through a uh, magnetic frown separator, uh, acid leach them, and finally hand pick them um, with tweezers under a microscope uh, until we got about, um, you know, roughly 20 to 40 milligrams of a sample, uh, pack it up and send it uh, to a nuclear facility to be irradiated, uh, bring them back to the lab and uh, uh, put them in a noble gas mass spectrometer to collect ages. Um, and that obviously is a few, few month long process and uh, once we collect those ages, then we can kind of uh, reconstruct hotspot tracks. Um, and we may have multiple hotspot tracks in this area that we're looking at. Cool. I didn't know you crushed them up and washed them. Yeah, that sounds like a really, really, really long process. So. Yeah. All right. Sea star? Yeah, a percentage sea star on top of the rock. Yeah. Yep. Is okay. that the same kind that we saw earlier? Uh, probably very similar. Yeah, this you can see this one. Um, yeah, has its arm, arm tips up. <laughs> Each of those arms has very, very sharp spines uh, along the sides, uh, which could be used, I suppose, in in the capture of particles and yeah. prey that it might want to consume. Looks like it might have some new arms growing. Oh, yeah. At least one. Yep. Do they yep. a little Siri on the ventral side? Uh, so I think they stick, so their mouth parts are actually up, so we're looking at the ventral side. Um, oh, so And the what's dorsal side is out the other side, and I think they use, I don't, I'm not sure if they're tube feet or, or some other um, mechanism, but yeah, they attach, not attach, but they, they suck suction to the rock. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if those, I mean, there's definitely one new arm. It looks like one new arm is growing, but then there's two little protrusions. Yeah. I don't know if those are the. Yeah, I see possibly three new regrowths yeah. and others at various stages. It's always interesting cool. what, how they lose these, because I've never seen any other animals interact with brisingids mm. uh, in, a, in a predatory way. So they could, you know, they could just as easily autotomize their arms, which is the process of, you know, animals just sacrificing appendages um, to either escape a predator or, or for some other reason, maybe they have a parasite. That's not uncommon. Definitely a, a very, uh, very neat trick that I could use as a human the ability to <laughs> what? the ability to, lo to lose an appendage <laughs> if you're in an emergency situation okay, and it regrow is. it. <laughs> no. I love that very quiet. What? So <laughs> such a such a that's such a great superpower. No, for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not one I would choose personally, but yeah, I was gonna say the regrow appendages. That's 
I mean, on previous watches, we've had this question as something that we all answer. And I don't think anyone <laughs> has said that they want their super <laughs> But you didn't ask Steve, so. Limbs. Well, yeah, because, no, because we all have our limbs out here, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> it normally, it's like flying, invisibility, <laughs> regrowing Aut limbs. Autotomy, yeah. Okay, science deep. Yeah. Yep. What's going on with this rock here on the right? It's like yeah, it looks like an interesting slit in it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Which one? Oh, there, yeah, Little there's, fissure in the middle there. there's some yeah. black corals also in the midst amongst. Uh -oh. We got a biogeo head to head. <laughs> yeah, <they're, laughs> these, the Look rocks the rock. here. Look at the are, rock. Yeah, the rocks here are. Yeah, ni uh, nice little gouge in there. Uh, lumpy. Yeah. Lumpy. That's a technical yeah. term. Yeah. <laughs> Scoured. Lumpy, yeah. I'm not sure what, what's going on there. Uh, can we Looks like gonna zoom in here if we have time for yes. this stuff? This pink branch. We're ending a ship move. Um, if we anticipate wanting to keep going, I should put another one in now. Otherwise, we can have some time to look around here. Yeah, I, I think look around, but we're not going to sample um, here right now. Would you like several minutes of looking around or over 10 minutes of looking around? <laughs> uh, Clear to zoom when you're happy. Just a few minutes. Okay, then I will put in a move if RV is okay with that. I'm happy. Great. What? Bridge nap. What's going on here? This is one of these... Uh, uh, we can add another five zero meters to zero six zero. This is one of these branchy, branchy bamboo corals that you just like makes you re makes you reconsider your life choices <laughs> studying <laughs> corals. Do they, Steve? Yes, yes, it does because it just doesn't make sense. Ah. Because, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> can we can Sorry, we take can we take a small snip of this, yeah. please? Steve Oskovich, what did you roll roll the tapes? Please. No, I, I I picked that line up from oh, uh, from from Andrea, the the geologist. That you won't stop. You, you you just said we're not we're not taking any samples. Yeah. No, I regret that decision. Roll the tapes. Yeah. <laughs> Roll the tapes. <laughs> well, well, it, it's a, in my mind. There there's. Get forward. Starboard B or D. This view is really uh, we, really nice. We we could go in the forward box. I I think we yeah, we could. We can. Well, we we can do. Is it a floaty? No, it's not a floaty. We can throw it in then the forward box on the left hand side with all the other corals bits. There should only be the one that's connected to the rock. In that yeah, one. yeah, and the the little bit of Cipu Gorgia. They're they're different families, so they're very easy to tell apart. Um, but yeah, maybe if you can sample it kind of at the branch point, that would be ideal. But it's okay if you don't get that much too, because there's some there's some funny stuff going on with this bamboo. It's a different species for certain from the other unbranched one yep. we sampled. Uh -huh. Nice. So what part are you trying to sample? Um, below the branch point. That's fine, yeah. Well. Yeah. If, uh, yeah, I mean, getting some is better than, yeah. Uh, yes. So this viewpoint's really nice, because uh, you can see this nice formation of pillow basalts on the left-hand side and abruptly changes to a sheet flow, uh, which is really strange because that's kind of indicative of a, a really slow eruption versus a very, very fast eruption. And it happens uh, abruptly. Which one's the fast one and which one's the slow one? Oh yeah, sure. So the sheet flow is gonna be much faster than the uh, pillow uh, flows. So on the right side of the screen, you got a fast flow and on the left, uh, pillow uh, 
pillow basalt's much slower, um, which might be the same eruption slowed down or a separate eruption. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, that, that's plenty of material if we can get this. We don't have to go back. Okay. Lovely. I held the ship as uh, Atalanta's getting a little ahead. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. That's so. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Okay. I was confused. The Sigma Gorge is on the other side in the Lambda. Yes. Okay. Or Omega. Yep. Yeah, we'll we'll try to be economical since um, we may not have slurp capacity and try and maximize the box space by combining different families of corals that are easily differentiatable. If that's a word, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that bamboo coral is kind of an enigma. It's definitely a different species than the one we sampled earlier, which just shows you how similar they can look, but how different they can be. Then the sheer size of the sclerites and the body wall of the polyps on this. Oh, the oh, there's a, oh my God. some trash. Trash? Trash. Oh. Oh my goodness, really? Where? What is it? Yeah. Oh, you're up there. No. Can? Interesting. What, did you, what kind of can? Yeah, SpaghettiOs. SpaghettiOs. Is it really? <laughs> no, I don't know. Looks older. Labeling. Yeah, it looks much older. Almost like an oil can, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Huh. Oh, I oh. 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 Mm -hmm. Something purple. Oh, oh wow. Purple to me. Is that a sea pig? Still no. That is I not know. a secret. <laughs> no. Sadly, no. <laughs> One day it's going to happen. <laughs> There's a stick there on the right, Steve, for you. Stick. Bottom right. No. Uh, missed uh, no, yeah. We can pass on the stick. Okay. Pass on the stick. What about this stick? Wait, so <laughs> is that a sea cucumber? It's a sea cucumber, yeah. Cool. We sampled sea cucumbers extensively nope. last year because we were um, we we were we had some scientists on board from the University of Hawaii at Manoa who were working on food webs in the deep sea and were interested in gut contents of uh, sea cucumbers. It's an interesting little yeah what did you find cluster here? Yeah. Um, still still in progress from what I can tell it's a graduate student project so see, yeah, nice. in progress. So yeah, we're on the top oh. of something, right? Yeah, we can see over it, but... Can we drop a target that says like top yeah. of local high area? Do you want to get back on top of it? Oh, okay. Are you... Okay. Do 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 do. I think we're okay. There was that some, maybe some branching coral in the top left? Yeah. Of Georgia? Yeah, that, that strikes me as a primnoid, but if we have no. time, we can zoom. If not, I think we've already imaged that colony. It's very reminiscent of this branching Norella species that we uh, had seen earlier. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what this is all about. Real quick, Nick, somebody wants to know uh, when you come to like smashing the rocks for the samples and collecting data, is there a special hammer that's used for that or how do you actually go about smashing rocks? Sometimes, sometimes we do use a, uh, a hammer. Uh, if we don't use a hammer, uh, we'll use like a badger uh, a crusher uh, and ultimately a disc mill uh, and kind of grind it down into about roughly 250 to 450 microns. Uh, so just above, you know, dust level. Okay. Kind of want to avoid dust because don't want to inhale it. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like a special hammer to me. Yeah. Like. Yeah, but sometimes we just start off with a good yeah. old-fashioned swing of a hammer. Oh, there was yeah. a, what is that thing. fish? Oh my gosh. It's a it's a macroeurid fish for sure. Based on its dorsal fin, it's so it's that would that would put it in the family of grenadiers and rat tails. Are we looking at the back right now? Yeah, we're looking at the back side. Oh, there we are. Okay. Wow. There. So that, that large dorsal fin tells us it's a mercurid. 
or grenadier, or sometimes called rat tails. Pretty characteristic uh, deep sea uh, fish species. Certain members of that group, um, that family, Macroridae, Macroiridae, are commercially fished, but to the best of our knowledge, not this species and not here. Uh, but usually at higher latitudes, yeah. So if you ever see grenadier on the back of your surimi packet, it's probably that fish. You know, right. members of that family, not that fish, but that fish is quite healthy. Glad yeah. to hear it. I think we might have just kind of fallen. Sorry? There's another fish in the back. Oh. A lot of fish. We just like, uh, okay. <laughs> we came over that little lump, bump. Oh yeah, there it is. You know you have a volume, right? <laughs> Uh, I think we just kind of fell off this the side of this little ridge going up the seamount, which is interesting. Is there any chance we can kind of mosey? That's back? what I was going to ask you, yeah. yeah. You want to try to follow that outcropping? Yeah, it would be nice to try to follow the line of the ridge. Okay. And if, and if it deviates too much, we'll make another plan. Let's, yeah, you want to just drive back and then we can figure out where we were? And yeah. then I'll put in a move. So Steve, can you remind us what your plans are for the samples we're collecting in the biology realm? Yeah, so um, pretty generically, um, most of our samples go to the um, Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology, where they're accessioned and available for requests. Well, there's a Iridogorgia colony, um, first of the dive. Uh, we don't need to stop, we'll keep going up to the ridge. Um, so when we get them on shore, we preserve the specimens for the museum in a uh, high concentration of alcohol, which dries out the tissues and inhibits the decay and degradation, and it also preserves the DNA present in the cells and tissues. Do you still, uh, sorry to interrupt, do you still see <laughs> degradation over time with the alcohol? Um, okay. On a longer no, time scale? Once I'm on the ridge. Oh, there you it know, is. I, I'm not sure what the degradation is over time, but I know that if I specimens think. are immersed in ethanol and they remain that way, um, and they're not allowed to dry out, they are pretty stable nice uh, yeah. in the long term. Is it a very large? A lot depends on like the the actual process of preserving them. You know how f how fast they're preserved yeah. at the surface. That's cool. Got oh. it. Nice. That's a gorgeous sponge. Yeah, beauty. Probably another, maybe a bolosoma. Okay. Bolosomas can get this um, large and uh, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Holy, <laughs> <laughs> latticed, <laughs> porous. I mean, I porous. porous. porous yeah. Yeah. yeah, holus. I was yeah. going to try to say like orifice, but that's not. <laughs> There's porous, no. like periphera. It's almost like it's in the name. It's almost like it's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is Bolosoma, a euplectelid species. Uh, these were pretty widely sampled um, during the capstone expeditions. Mm. A little shrimp in there, too. Yeah, a couple of them. Great teamwork, ROV and video, making that happen. It seems like this yellow wash is characteristic of Bolosoma. It's unclear why that hmm. they're like that. Some species have it, some species don't. Just on the stock? Yeah, mm -hmm. or throughout. I mean, the previous Bolosoma uh, we had seen on the dive also had a yellow at the base. Hmm. RV, can we zoom on the shrimp? Yes. Sorry. Right. You're good. Just checking before I move your eyes. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Real and I still cam images. So holy. Yeah. So intricate. 
I wonder if the shrimp was all in or if it's a shrimp colony in there. Hope you don't have trypophobia. I was just thinking that. I'm like, ugh. Because we were zooming in. I was like, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I like it from afar, but close up is a little. It looks cozy. Uh, no. no. <laughs> Great zooms. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Okay. Well, here's our ridge. What's up? Uh, yeah, from no it's yep. So RV, when you're ready, our next move will be, oh, let's say zero five zero. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm ready. I'm happy. You're ready? Yeah, great. Holding. The ridge, I think, is going this way. So I'm just going to carry on going that way. I just wanted to see what was up here first before we just moved off. Bathy pathies, species black coral over on the left. Oh. Rider. And another Brisingid. Let's actually do zero 060 zero, just to have a little more standoff. Another sea star? What is the zero. common name for that type of sea star? Um. You know? A Brisingid Z star. Brisingid. <laughs> yeah. Brisingid. That's the thing about common names, right? Um, in order for them to have common names, they kind of have to be commonly found and commonly occurred, you know, mm -hmm. in the environment. And people give them names, you know, because they're common. But if they're rare, if people don't see them, if you need to have a, an ROV or, a, you know, a big fishing boat to catch or examine any of these, they often don't get common names because they're not commonly encountered. I must feel like Touché. going yeah. back here is just going to be this, like the cliff, but the ridge is kind of going almost, doesn't it feel like that? Or is that what your map's it's going this way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's know. going this way too. So maybe we could do, I mean, yeah, we could do zero five zero then, or zero four zero. Maybe whatever's clever. I'm happy doing whatever. I'm just saying, like, the interesting stuff seems to be here. For yeah, yeah. Reason. And you want to get closer. Yeah, but I'm happy. Was that a dead sponge we just passed? Um, I didn't catch it, but most likely there's a lot of dead sponge stalks here. So our viewers online might notice that we are using these uh, two green laser beams that is to help us uh, measure the items that we are taking a look at. Um, so those laser beams are 10 centimeters yep. apart. Uh -huh. I'll just wait. Yeah. Okay. I Thank think you. someone was asking that a few minutes ago. How do we measure the specimens? Yeah without bringing them up to the surface. <laughs> and so that's one way to do Let's it. Let's do zero four zero then, if you're going that way. Okay, Let's split the difference. Bridge okay. now. Can we change our bearing to zero four zero? Yep, thanks. So on our alternate dive track, uh, track A, which is off to the north, this would be the depth of the ridge also extending off to the north side. So I imagine the species we find here would be very similar to those we find off the north side. 
Interesting. Oh, I see. Coming on the uh, other flank of the seamount. Yeah, north, north, uh, the north track. How is the decision made to start at this track? Um, I I'm not certain. Uh, I was sleeping, so I would imagine it's probably due to just the convenience of forces being in in one direction. Yeah. Rather than having to move the ship laterally across the forces into them as. Yeah, we're heading into it right yeah. now, so that makes sense. In science, this is probably our, this is definitely our last um, ship move. We just put one in, uh, okay. but we've got 15 minutes left of the watch. So. All right. Well, I think we've done pretty good on rocks. Yeah. For this watch. Yeah. 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 Unless you wanted to grab another. <laughs> <laughs> Always I won't say, I won't say no, but I w let's get up on top of the ridge for the next watch and maybe yeah, they can yeah. um, plan out how they want to do this. Save some space for the next watch. Yeah, we've, we've got okay. till, um, we've got 12 so more hours of yeah. dive time. Uh, so that would be probably 10 more hours of bottom time. So okay. more than enough. There's only six waypoints in this track. Yeah. Looks like we got some flat terrain coming up oh, there. Yes. So they could easily make it from three to four in one watch. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, sadly, it's going to be us on the blue water tonight, yeah. unless something unexpected Ooh. happens. Look at that sea star. I'm kind yeah. of excited for blue water. I don't know. I have a feeling we're going to see something special. You get to ask us a bunch of questions. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the conversation going. <laughs> There's another one of those uncommon sea stars, which have a name I don't remember. Sea stars. Persingids. 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 Per with a V, like as in? B, bravo. As in bravo? Okay. Mm. Persingids. <laughs> which is Pers named after Persingids. 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 Yeah, Persingids. They have a very interesting Wikipedia article. Yeah, there's a great um, blog from Christopher Ma of the, of the Smithsonian, who's a, a kinoderm specialist, um, talking about the etymology of percentages from uh, a Norse goddess. Wow. That's awesome. Who wore um, very distinctive jewelry. And I guess this was inspired the naming of percentages. Oh. I will do my research and be more well read on percentages stars <laughs> next time. Oh, there's a precious coral right in front of us, Hemicorellium, that pink one. That's the first sighting for the dive also. It seems like this is a really nice depth where we start getting a lot of the diversity, which is, I would say, characteristic of what we've seen elsewhere in this region as well. Um, 20, yeah, 1,900 meters to 2,400 meters is kind of the, the deep lower bathial diversity maximum. What um, what does that mean? What was that oh, uh, hemicorallium. Also, what does that mean? <laughs> it's, a it's a genus of precious coral. Okay. Yeah. The true precious corals, I guess. I have right. to start differentiating I that. I know, the yeah. fake ones. <laughs> well, I set this up the, very nicely. The nice less like precious <laughs> corals. <laughs> <laughs> They're all precious. The pyrite, if you will, of the coral world. <laughs> mm. See what I did there? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all saw Steve. We all saw Steve. Another moment for Steve. <laughs> is everyone. he smug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smug is the classic line. Are we going smug back? Camp. Are we going back? <laughs> smug camp. You can't see him. Smug camp. <laughs> smug camp. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no, he's hiding. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Steve, by the way. <laughs> 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 Reaction from the geologist? <laughs> We'll give you your space. Too. Okay. <laughs> this is this is actually a defensive measure for me because oh yeah, there's a tunicate oh, right there. Tunicate, yeah. Yep. Very nice. It's an old one, possibly. So that's a type of uh, tunicate, chordate. Um, the most closely related thing to us. 
uh, in the deep sea here other than fish. Let me know if I can get a zoom on a view. Oh, you ready? yes. Let me zoom, sorry. Cool. So we're halfway through that move. Actually, okay. no, we're three quarters of the way through the move. Almost okay. done. Ten meters left. Yeah. So I, I think um, one of these was collected. Or something very similar was collected during um, the Kingman Palmyra cruise earlier this year. Yes. I believe it was. I think there's a lot more uh, coming up the slope here. I'm excited to see what's what's coming up. Stay tuned for the eight to twelve. Things are picking Next up as soon as we're about to. <laughs> That's really weird. Yeah. There's a bunch of these really small primnoids, though, and I mean, if if I could vacuum a piece of them up, I would. But they're just so so faint. Fragile, small. Look at that shot. Talk about still cam? Yeah. yeah. Good job. Oops, froze again. Uh, I think, yeah, so that's. That's another Iridogorgia colony. Sponges, a couple different species of sponges. So again, the eight to, no, we're the four to eight crew. Uh, four to eight, we're leaving here in about 10 minutes. We're gonna switch over to the next crew who's gonna be here from eight to 12. So if you have any last minute questions for us, any comments, this is the time to get those in before we switch and have some other uh, folks come on in the control room and do the next four hours. Ship move is complete, but we'll have some Atalanta swings still. Okay. Uh, for the next geologist, how would we classify the rock here? I'm this, sorry? Is this still a talus slope? Yeah, I would say that this particular uh, section is, is kind of a debris field of, of fractured basalts uh, that piled up together in what we call a talus field, yeah. And again, you'll, you'll likely see those in the bottom of a slope or along the slope itself. <laughs> I'm going to call this uh, this triclops the chitin cam because I can see on the sides and towards the undersides of the rocks as we're really low like this. It's really uh, a, a perspective we don't often get. Yeah. But and you can still see the lasers faintly. Yeah, um, they can pick up like the chitons and the small shelled animals that are on the on the edges underneath the rock. Yeah. How often do we see chitons in the deep sea, though? Pretty often. Really? Yeah. We've nice. sampled a few of them over the years. Really? Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Normally not on the list of target species, though. Uh -huh. Uh, we're, we're just entering now an area that I mentioned of higher diversity. So we, we came up over up this ridge and we, there's a ridge that goes off to the north and west here, or north and east, that we're trying to reacquire. And uh, there seems to be a lot of diversity of corals and sponges and uh, fishes, other animals. So something happened just as we came up between two and three waypoints. That permitted this explosion of biodiversity. And then do you think you'll have a, an explosion as well where you get to that saddle area past the third waypoint? Possibly, possibly.
So again, the general goal of this dive is uh, we're exploring an unnamed uh, seamount. We are taking a look at the geological aspect of it, as well as the biological. Um, there have been a few samples that have been collected so far. Uh, I think about five or six rocks at this point, some coral samples. Yeah, I have been debating um, about some of these fans, uh, these primnoid fans, possibly on the next watch or uh, sometime over the next several hours getting a sample. I don't think they're going to disappear because they're, they've been pretty common and consistent from the mid-slope at waypoint 2 all the way up, and we're not moving too much more vertical. Um, <coughs> So it would be nice if we if we find some associates on some of these fans to grab a piece. Um, but we're going to do a watch change in the back row. Um, and so we're going to go off comms, but if there's any last minute questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer them. So like Steve just said, we're going to be switching teams now. Uh, the 8 to 12 crew is coming on. And again, this dive is about 20 hours. So you will be seeing the 4 to 8 crew again at 4 in the afternoon, Hawaiian Standard Time. So we'll be on from 4 to 8 uh, later on in the day. So thank you all so much for joining us for this portion. Uh, you got Stephanie coming up now, uh, one of the science communication fellows, as well as the rest of the crew. So thanks and happy exploring.
Hey. Hey, gang. Hey, hey. Hello. And we're back. What's shaking, team? What's shaking? What's shaking? The bacon in my stomach that oh, I just nice. ate. Shaking bacon. Looks like we're making our way up that ridge. Is that right? Yeah. Going up to the waypoints. Cool. Well. Yeah. So we just keep going. Uh, it's a good question for the science team. Yeah. Yeah, science. <laughs> Hello, science. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Where are we headed? Uh, let's just keep going up this uh, the nose of this promontory here. Okay. And head toward the waypoint and see what we can uh, see. What we can see. Uh, okay. Uh, you mean um, the waypoint three B? The one that's right up just to the northeast of you there. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. So for viewers at home, welcome. We're the 8 to 12 watch. It's been so long since we've been in this control van, I've forgotten who I am. So let's do some introductions, right? <laughs> Good introduction, um, introduction. Yeah, I, I thought about it while I was trying to sleep last night. Nice. Um, so I'm Stephanie. I'm a natural science and children's illustrator here on the Nautilus as a science communication fellow. Back row, if you're ready, if you want to introduce yourselves, that'd be great. Good morning. This is Rob. I'm the watch lead for 8 to 12. We'll have to find a name for ourselves at some point. I'm also the geologic science lead and uh, hope to have a good watch, good geology, good biology. Good morning, everybody. I'm Paula Rodriguez. I'm part of the science team, more uh, biological side, and I hope we can see today very exciting things. Good morning, I'm Maronke Harris. I am in the data logger seat, so you can't really see me on most of the cameras, but I'm here. And uh, I am a science manager in training, and outside of the Nautilus, I'm a PhD student at the University of Victoria. Can I please get Bubble on uh, forward, sorry, toolbox view? Uh, bubble on porch? Toolbox. Toolbox. Thank you. Roger. Okay, good, you can go back to maybe a gauge check at this. Last gauge check was at 7.15. Okay, that's good, that's what I wanted to see. You can write it down or not, whatever you think. Oh, okay. I just wanted to like, put eyes on it really quick, but feel free to write it down. I'll write it down. Alrighty. Front row, when you got your ducks in a row, you can introduce yourselves as well. All right, ducks are in a row. Uh, I'm Trevor. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> Trevor is dot, dot, dot. I am in the Herc seat, doing the Herc flying. And what else do I say? Are you done? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am Elias. I'm in Avigito on board. And um, I'm also a graduate student at the University of New Hampshire, majoring in ocean engineering, ocean mapping. Oh, that's me. Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Annabelle Baker. I'm in the Atalanta seat. I'm the ROV intern here, and I am an undergraduate student at Oregon State University. Go Beavs. Go Beavs. Uh, Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer on this expedition and uh, sitting here on the 8 to 12 watch and then all these cameras and zooming in on things. Bubble to craft? You can just do that. Oh. You don't need to ask for that. Wow. That's empowering. <laughs> <laughs> I can just do that. 
Uh, oh. Look at that hose. Hmm. Okay, there we go, I can see. Is that another upside down one? They found one earlier. Upside down worm? Yeah, the uh upside down. You want us to look at zoom in on something? The sea star. Yeah. I don't know what to look at. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. This little oh. fella here. Yeah, we found okay. it again. can have a zoom in on there, please, Dave. Yeah, it has a little yes. little arm missing there, too, growing back. And another one, and which another is re regenerating. Yeah, another one. one next to it, too. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah. Thank no. you. Come wide. at 2,471 meters in depth. Yeah, we're still coming up this steep nose of volcanics. It's like a, a mixture of pillows poking through and also some talus in the, uh, the lower lying areas. Hmm. Trevor, you want to estimate how steep this is? Uh, it's about, about this, uh, about this steep. Okay. <laughs> uh, this sonar's backwards. Really? I was thinking like this steep? <laughs> Oops. It's over 45 anyway, it looks like, locally. How about this one? Is this one backwards too? Let's find out.